Well, for the regime, that didn't go quite to plan, did it? Trump spent the best part of 70 minutes doing what they hate the most. Laughing right in their faces. Vagina. Despite CNN having spent the last eight years depicting Trump as the epitome of all evil, seems he's still quite popular. Please welcome Donald Trump. Yeah, even amongst women, some of whom found his response to the E. Jean Carroll case nothing short of hilarious. And of course, the crucial detail that everyone was missing. Her dog, or her cat, was named Vagina. The judge wasn't allowed to put that in. All of these things, he was Vagina. That word should never be pronounced any different ever again. Vagina. CNN host Caitlin Collins was there to moderate, and yes, ask tough questions, but interrupted Trump so many times that she betrayed her role as a biased partisan hack. And you're gonna find some real gems in there. But it was so Biden who alerted them that he had the documents. And only ended up falling prey to another classic Trump soundbite. I'm giving you a subpoena to return Are you them. ready? Are you ready? Can I talk? Yeah, what's you the mind? answer? Can it, do you mind? I would like for you to answer the okay, question. Okay, it's very simple to That's answer. That's why I asked it. It's very simple to You're a nasty person, I'll tell you. <laughs> No, I'm sure she's a really lovely person. If you are the Republican nominee and you are in that 2024 race, will you commit tonight to accepting the results of the 2024 election? Yeah, if I think it's an honest election, absolutely I would. Will you commit to accepting the results of the election regardless of the outcome? Do you want me to answer it again? If I think it's an honest election, I would be honored to. But no commitment there on the accepting the results regardless of the if, outcome? If it's an honest election, correct, but, I would. Okay, so not committing to accepting the 2024 election results or acknowledging what happened in 2020. President Trump you literally just asked him the same question three times in a row when he answered it. Okay, so literally not listening to him truthfully answer the question, then claiming he gave the opposite answer to what he actually did. Shameless hack. While there was a lot of fun to be had. I was impeached by a crazy woman named Nancy but Pelosi. But the question here is... What Trump looked like a real statesman when he addressed the very serious subject of the war in Ukraine. If I'm president, I will have that war settled in one day, 24 hours. Do you want Ukraine to win this war? Do you disagree with the current thing? I don't think in terms of winning and losing. I think in terms of getting it settled so we stop killing all these people and breaking down <laughs> this, this country. Stop killing people? Oh, no, no, no. Weapons contractors are enjoying soaring profits. The Ukrainian government just embezzled $400 million from fuel payments. We've got a thermonuclear world war to get started. Peace? Are you mad? Can you say if you want Ukraine or Russia to win this war? I want everybody to stop dying. But you but won't say that you want Ukraine to win. You, you know what else? You, you won't endorse the current thing. Say, I'll say this. I want Europe to put up more money because they're in for 20 billion. We're in for 170, and they should an be. And they should the equalize. War. They have plenty of money. They should equalize. I got with NATO. But I'm when I sat down, I got them right to now, put Mr. up hundreds. Yeah, he's talking about Ukraine. Maybe shut up and listen. This is another reminder of how when the opposing side in an argument are actually allowed to make their arguments without being crushed by the weight of the censorship industrial complex, the cut and thrust of politics and political debate can actually be fun. Remember that? The entire thing made me nostalgic for the heady days of 2016. And speaking of nostalgia, remember the days before mountains of meaningless email? Remember the thrill of receiving a real letter in the real mail? Rediscover that nostalgic excitement with historic mail. A thoughtful gift for anyone who appreciates history and the lost art of letter writing. Well, what do we have here? It's nothing less than a letter from Franklin D. Roosevelt to good old Winston Churchill. Fascinating stuff if you're a World War II buff. The letter demonstrates the special relationship between these two iconic leaders. Check out this letter from Walt Disney to Richard Nixon. Historic mail is the perfect gift for history lovers. Learn about the fascinating inner lives of the world's greatest historical figures from the primary source itself. It's Walt Disney to President Nixon when he was vice president. And that's what the letter actually looked like. It was a signature and everything. That is so yeah, cool. Yeah, he was writing one to a TV show. He couldn't make it, but that's kind of cool, huh? Yeah, that's really, I really cool. These. I love these. I love that. Yeah, really he looked at the stamp. That's cute. It's just interesting to see this history. 
Yeah, and how authentic it is. That's really cool. Every week a stamped envelope is delivered to your doorstep containing a reproduction of a letter penned by a famous historical figure, supported by a document providing historical context and a typed version of the letter. Get 10 weekly letters for only $59.99. Or get a whole 52 weeks worth of letters for an in-depth, personalised exploration through a specific period of history. Get letters from historical titans including George Washington, Abraham Lincoln, Nikola Tesla and Thomas Edison. Almost as if they came straight from their desk to yours. Personalise your gift with a special certificate featuring your name and the receiver's name on it. And don't forget, it's Mother's Day coming up this week. Surprise your mom with this timeless gift. Just use the code PJW to get your 10% discount. Go to historicmail.com slash PJW to get your gifts now and help support this channel. Now back to the video. CNN didn't exactly pick the sharpest knife in the drawer when they chose Miss Collins, a former entertainment editor to host the event. The country is being destroyed by stupid people, by very stupid people. You once said that using the that using the debt ceiling as a negotiating wedge uh, just could not happen. You you said that when sure. you were in the That's Oval Office. That's when I was president. To, so why is it different now that you're out of office? Because now I'm not president. <laughs> Despite her spending nearly half an hour on January 6, Trump was unmoved. And then self-styled fact-checker Collins got severely fact-checked herself. And it was fucking hilarious. And they went to the Capitol, and they were breaking into the Capitol, smashing windows, injuring police officers. Why did you, why did it take you three hours to tell them to go home? I don't believe it did. Oh, let me pull it out. I have to pull it out. <laughs> So if you look at, on January 5th, the day before, I said, please support our Capitol Police and law enforcement. They are truly on the side of our country. Stay peaceful. Stay peaceful. This was the day before, and this was in the form of Twitter. And yes, Trump dare say her name. Yeah, another three one hours, over 140 officers were injured that day. And a person named Ashley Babbitt was killed. Yes. You know what? She was killed, and she shouldn't have been killed. And after the night was done, suffice to say, CNN wasn't best pleased with the outcome. Before I answer your question, let me just be very clear. What we saw tonight was outrageous. It was going so bad for them that what was expected to be a 90-minute broadcast was cut short at 70 minutes. So despite having a complete ratings winner on their hands, CNN took their little ball and they ran home early. CNN journalist text, that was sickening! Shame on us! But after the Trump segment of the event was over, his supporters continued the demolition of CNN. Does it bother you that he keeps talking about 2020 and not 2024? You guys asked him the first question at the town hall about the 2020 election rather than current stuff. So don't you think he could say it's time for me to start talking about 2024 and not lies that aren't true? Couldn't the media ask him a question about 2024? Jake Tapper was on the verge of tears and had a total meltdown. And the falsehoods kept coming fast and furious about the January 6th insurrection, about the threat to Vice President Pence, about Pence's ability to overturn the election, about COVID, about the economy and more. He called a black law enforcement officer a thug. He was a thug. He shot a woman dead. But it was clear what had upset them the most. Trump's humor. Oh, I didn't have a script. I don't need scripts like a certain person that's in well, there right time, now. What time? The video. It, it can... I mean, you can protest all you want, but what the regime really hates is when you make fun of them. Fucking disgrace! CNN gives Trump primetime campaign rally! Oh, God forbid the likely presidential candidate gets given a public forum. It shouldn't be permitted. AOC was literally shaking at the fact that Trump was even allowed to speak to the American people. On the platforming of of um, such atrocious disinformation, but I would. I think it was a profoundly irresponsible decision. The audience is cheering him on and laughing at the host! Vagina. <laughs> Yeah, because unlike you regime sycophants, not everyone just swallows the legacy media narrative without question. Not everyone is conned by your phony moral high ground posturing. Not everyone is happy with the monstering and demonization of tens of millions of Americans. Not everyone is on board with sending an endless slush fund of taxpayer money to buy weapons to prolong a war for the interests of the military industrial complex. Not everyone is content with the country's borders being prized wide open. Not everyone is completely disconnected from reality. The temper tantrums were delectable, but more revealing is to the mental state of top Democrats, who are now increasingly coming to the realization that despite all their efforts, 
Trump could indeed win again. This was Trump in his element confronting the adversarial media, reaching out directly to the real American people. There's no doubt about it, Trump's back, baby! And the funniest thing is that CNN played a massive, direct role in helping it happen. 